Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we're going to have a good old battleship showdown. It's going to be two battleships of mine, the Empire of Japan versus two United States battleships. I'm going to be building a ship akin to the Design A150, better known as the Shikishima. She was supposed to have three twin 20-inch guns. So that is going to be only six barrels, but seeing as they are 20-inch guns, they can inflict quite a bit of damage. Let's get to designing. Now I know I have access to the Super Battleship, but I'm going to stick quite a bit closer to what I want it to be um, sort of historical. I mean, the game allows you to go somewhat historical, but usually you have to take some liberties with the particular designs that uh, the game allows you to do and that are more or less akin to what happened in reality. I'm going to stick with 71,050 tons because I cannot really get the slider down to exactly where I want it, which is 71,000 tons exactly. See, it just, when I move it one tick, it just ticks by 100. Now, um, this was a an alternative design of Yamato. So I can take some of those designs or some of those design decisions uh, in effect. Let's go with a Super Pagoda Tower and then set up my barbette first. Normally I go through all of this first, but I thought I'd reverse these situations for a while. I think one of these huge ones is going to be sufficient, and then twin double... There we go. That is some serious firepower, and it actually looks quite in line with this particular hull. It looks like it sort of belongs there. We're supposed to, for example, a quad turret? Nah, not quite. All right, Modern Secondary Tower or Modern Secondary Tower 2. I am doing long-range gunnery, so the more long-range bonuses I get, the better. And Modern Secondary Tower 4 are going to allow me to do just that. I hope that I still have enough room on the stern to put another turret down. Yeah, I do, but not by a whole lot. It's going to have to suffice, this one. Let's put the other turret a bit farther forward. Okay. Right. The Shikishima was supposed to have, um, according to the Wikipedia page anyway, there's not that much known about the A150 class, or at least I haven't looked into it too deeply. It was supposed to have many 3.9-inch dual-purpose guns. Uh, basically 4-inch in this game. The thing is, it's not really going to be that useful in this particular fight, because I will be taking on an enemy battleship. And the enemy battleship is uh, most likely not going to be terribly impressed with my assortment of 3-inch uh, <laughs> and 4-inch guns. Ideally, at short range, I would pen 9.9 .9 inches of belt armor, and that's with Lidite 2. But seriously, it's not really going to impact it that much. Okay, for this fight, I'm going to go with geared steam turbines, oil. Um, the ship probably won't be too quick. So let's say it's going to be a medium funnel. And go for maximum bulkheads. Boiler should be sufficient now. No, not quite. Alright, let me draw up the statistics of the Yamato and see what I need to have as far as engine capability. Because that's what I'm sort of basing this design on. Seeing as the A150 design was a slightly adjusted version of Yamato. Alright, Yamato is supposed to do 27 knots-ish. Um, let's say we're going to play with the range slider a bit for today. It's going to be long range. Incru improving the armor to croup. Uh, maximum barbette thickness. The last thing I want is one of these things to go popping off, because I don't have that many turrets to waste anyway. Torpedo blister is not really that required, because the enemy battleships, well, most likely don't have any torpedoes. But it's never a guarantee with these guys. All or nothing armor scheme. Anti-flood, all of it, and reinforced bulkheads too. Forced boilers, I gotta get that engine efficiency up to 100%. Um, an auxiliary engine will probably benefit me quite a bit, but I would rather make sure that my guns can fire as quickly as possible, and right now they have a reload of 92 seconds. So let's fix that first. Now they have a reload of 55 seconds, which is not bad, but still, I'm not throwing out too many shells. Let's make them electrohydraulic turrets, so they can turn to the target quickly. Generation 2 radar rangefinder and stereoscopic 5 for long-range gunnery. Radio, not terribly important. 
I don't have a large fleet. I don't really feel that I need that much capability when it comes to radar. Shells, let's go for heavy shells. Uh, propellant, I'm going to say high TNT. It has the nicest average stats. And this puts the damage of these guns at 66,596. If they don't encounter any kind of armor. That's a big if. If they don't encounter any armor. The moment that they start to encounter armor, all bets are off. Now, when it comes to the uh, armor on the ship, according to the page that I'm looking at here, uh, they had 26-inch turret armor. That immediately puts me over budget. Now, what, of course, the game is not, or what, the, let's say, what real life is not taking into account versus the game is my armor quality of 118%. So, effectively, I would only need 13 inch here, but I don't feel too confident about that. I really don't want these things to get knocked out because I have so few of them. What could be very important aside from keeping the conning tower intact, is having deck armor. Because I'll try not to get too close to the enemy, seeing as um, it's a big target. Ideally, I would stay at range and take less hits than the enemy. I mean, that's usually how you try to fight a battle. A 6-inch deck armor? It's not a lot. But then again, you can barely protect yourself against any kind of 20 inch shell and this is also what I've tried to do in uh, one of my earlier videos this week where I tried to do tanking against 20 inch shells it is possible but you need a large ship and you need to have fewer guns or at least lower caliber guns these turrets weigh 4942 tons for reference if I were to go for 16 inch triples that would only weigh 3,100 tons. So that's 2,000 tons less rounded up than these things. And you still get nine gun, or sorry, uh, yeah, let's say I have uh, 15,000 in turrets right now. I could put five of these turrets on this ship. I would have 15 barrels as opposed to six, but my damage drops to 19,000 coming from 55,000. Anyway, um, I think the ship is about ready to go. I have a slight four weight offset. I'm not going to bother with any smaller secondaries because they're just going to be, well, pea shooters combined or compared to what that enemy battleship will probably have armor wise. So it's not really that important to have those. An auxiliary engine in this case would be nice to have because it aids me in uh, preventing any further damage from flooding. So I can pump out water faster, I can repair modules faster. Aux 4. Turbo Electric Drive 2. As far as armor goes, this is not going to be terribly historical because it's just not possible on this hull. At least not the way that I have it set up. If I would reduce the range to a bit less, that gives me another 1800 tons to play around with. But then again, you could not really protect the ship that well. I could probably get up to 7.5 inches of turret top armor. Uh, and maybe a bit more belt, maybe 7 inch, and then 12 inches of belt armor. I still have a very little amount left. There we go. 12, 2, no, 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 no. I'd rather have more on the conning tower. Conning tower gets knocked out, and we lose a lot of accuracy. Can't have that. The secondaries themselves, well, if these 3-inch guns get shot off, these 3s and 4s, I really won't lose any sleep over them. So having those things um, destroyed, I don't really care too much. Fortunately, secondaries, as far as I've seen, cannot get flash fires. If they did, <laughs> then I would definitely be protecting these things a lot better. But as it stands, 6-inch secondaries uh, or 6-inch armor on the secondaries should be sufficient. Now, I think that's just about it. Let's see if the Shikishima, Shikishima is capable of taking on a couple of U.S. battleships.
By the way, I have had people level criticism against my designs where it says, hey, uh, you're not using the range slider and this is going to get you into massive trouble when the campaign comes out. You know what? I'll deal with that when it comes out because I could prepare for it now, but it's a very high likelihood that by that time the game has changed, the numbers have changed, and I could prepare for it now, but would that really help me? I would be preparing for something that is, uh, I don't know, far into the future, potentially, and that really doesn't give me any benefits right now. So let's just go with no range on the ship, because we're not playing the campaign. I'm just playing a couple of battleships, Shikishima and Junyo, against the Americans. The Americans seem to have nine barrels of, ooh, 20 inch guns. Look at these boys go. So we're doing uh, a seriously outgunned fight here because this means that they have nine barrels per ship. So that's 18 barrels total versus my 12. It's now gonna come down to gunnery and armor. Who has the better gunnery? Who is going to land those hits first? Is it going to be them or me? And then it will depend on where do they hit. Ooh, that did come pretty close. I uh, want to pay my respects to all headphone users. I was not expecting the guns to go off just then. <laughs> but then again, uh, they probably won't hear my apology anyway. Because they might have lost an eardrum or two. Now, what do those ships have aside from a couple of 20s? Uh, it looks like they really saved on the amount of secondaries here. They have a few on some really weird positions. They even have a large barbette. But they decided to put... Uh, what is that, an 8-inch on there? Yeah, probably an 8-inch. Anyway, I have uh, drawn first blood on the enemy battleship here. And my accuracy is still in the, the, well, the low 13, 15 range. Oh, I hit another one. Good job, guys. This battleship is taking some serious hits. It doesn't appear to be traveling very quickly. Identification is going to take a while, so I cannot tell you how fast these things can possibly go. But it doesn't look too impressive. I'm going to correct my course here a bit. Making myself a more unlikely target to get hit. And um, hopefully that's going to make sure that these ships don't sink or lose a turret. It might, however, mean giving up the firepower from the aft turret. So I'm effectively using four guns per ship instead of the usual six. What? I hit him again? Jesus, these things are getting accurate. What I would really like to see is if I could pop the turrets on this battleship. I have absolutely no impact on that whatsoever. It's not like I could specifically target the turrets and try to knock those off. It's going to be completely RNG based to see where those shells come down. Ooh. Return fire taken on Shikishima. 176 damage as it flies right through the deck. Now as expected, that will happen. Because uh, we're fighting at, what are we at, 27 kilometers-ish? 28.5. It doesn't even go up that far, the penetration um, roster, if you will. But I would need, I think, somewhere in the range of 58 inches of deck armor in order to tank one of those hits. So yes, the ship will definitely take damage um, as I get hit by 20-inch shells. I do, however, believe that the American ships are not using maximum accuracy. I feel like they're not really hitting as much as my ships are. So hopefully I can sink one of them. And then I have six barrels of 20 inch versus nine. Oh, sorry, then I have 12 versus nine. Slowly but steadily we're closing in. The accuracy is now at 15%. Just two huge warships from each side squaring off. I could already tell their accuracy, right? Just have one of their warships selected. 
And their accuracy is 4.1. Uh, target <laughs> Target chip size, plus 430% chance to hit. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Uh, they have 96.2% chance bonus for long range tech and tower. What's mine comparatively? 110. So that means that my ship has better technology. My ship has better tech. So maybe I shouldn't be pushing in, I should be turning out. Because especially at longer range, I will have an advantage. Headphone users, prepare to be hit with another 20 in salvo. Say what you will, but I think the game still looks really good. Being turret ready. Probably waiting for a full salvo. There we go. Ooh, that looked like a pretty painful hit. Yeah, that was 189 damage. And Shikishima is down to 88, 79% in fact. Range 23-8. Continue the turn. What is your chance to hit me now? Because I am trying to maneuver. But it does... Yeah, it does give me a slight benefit. In the form of a minus 20% chance to hit. But of course, I cannot really offset that too much. All I can do is just try to maneuver away. This battleship is getting seriously damaged. Identification is still only 64% though. We've also seemingly hit this battleship here, but marginally. It's barely taken a scratch. Another salvo. Oh, there we go. Fire and another fire. That was two hits. Mid deck and stern deck. That's getting dangerously close to that turret. I'm going to try and sort of fire over my shoulder as I'm trying to increase the distance here. 23-6, 24-9, 23-7. Very good. I hope that I can still fire my turrets under this angle. Yes, I can. Very good. It looks like the Americans have switched to the John Yo for targeting. Hold on, did we switch target? Yes, we did. Damage the main gun. Good work. I know it's random. But I'm really rooting for the Japanese battleships in this one. Identification, 86. Just the sheer size of these things. Headphone users, brace, brace, brace. I know I gave them quite a bit of critique, especially when they just came out, because I didn't really see the benefit of having them. But the noise that these things make, that is definitely one of the benefits. Shikishima has an accuracy of 18% versus the Junio's 24. I wonder if that's a battle damage penalty that I've taken. I have a 4.8% damage instability debuff, but it's not that bad. Junio does not have that. But Junio is also slightly closer, by about a kilometer. Ooh, look at that. That right there is a 20-inch shell, and yes, I know it should be deformed after impacting with the ship. But that 20-inch shell right there, that dinged off the side of the battleship. It just ricocheted. Let's, for shits and giggles, fire a high explosive salvo. Because my chance to ricochet, apparently, is getting quite significant. 96%. If I do a full turn, we might be able to get a broadside on them. But I would also be potentially giving quite a bit of broadside. Which is not really what I want to give these guys. 
29 damage. Wow. Partial damage. Not great. Let's commence that turn. We're going to turn fully to port. And start swinging the turrets around, hopefully. The battleships have now been identified. We're looking at Colorado and something else, but it's the same ship class. 107,550 tons, traveling at a mere 21 knots. The ship is uh, protected with minimum bulkheads. That is going to be very bad news for Colorado, as she just took two floodings. Her turrets reload in 66 seconds, which is really not that much worse than what mine do. And they have the same damage output, don't they? 55,083. They have Auxiliary 3 and Anti-Flood 3. So they will definitely be capable of doing quite a bit of damage control. What's my uh, ricochet chance here? Not, not too bad. It's 46 degrees. So there's an average chance to ricochet. I'm just going to send another HE salvo and hope that I can flood the Colorado a bit more. Junyo has now also taken some damage. Shikishima is already swinging her turrets around. Hold on, are these 360 degree turrets? What is Junyo going to do with her turrets? She's about to complete her turn. Ooh, Shikishima took a flooding hit. Serious damage to the stern. Uh, she gets hit for 287 damage. Yeah, the game does not fully recognize that this turret is clipping right through the main tower. <laughs> so, you on the bridge, what were you saying to me exactly? <laughs> no, this is not how it should go. Uh, similarly, this turret is clipping right through the other one. Oh, it took another big hit on Shikishima. 215. Steady course and turn away from the enemy. Colorado took quite a bit of flooding and she's now also burning. But I'm not going to be very impressed with the burning damage. Sure, it is possible to burn down ships, but it is rare. It really doesn't occur that often. Now let's switch back to uh, armor piercing because the ricochet angle is decreasing. So my hope is that I can do quite a bit of damage and especially hit them below decks or below the waterline. Increase flooding, and just drown the whole ship. I have to keep the Shikishima very much angled though, because she's taking too much damage. So once again, we're going to be turning away from the enemy, and throwing shells over our shoulder. So far, both Shikishima and Junyo have not taken any damage to the turrets. And hopefully, they're not going to take any, any uh, damage anytime soon. This one has taken some damage to Colorado. Look at the damage on that turret. Oh, shit. And that thing is still functional? Jesus. How much armor do you have on your turrets? 17.9 inch. You're lucky that that thing didn't strike the top of the turret. Because if it did, you might not have had a turret anymore. Okay, no flooding on these ships. Flooding on the Colorado has been limited. Two compartments are taking on, or have taken on water, but they're not flooding anymore, and they're working on pumping the water back out. North Dakota has taken some damage, but no floodings and no modules have been damaged. Let's see, what's your chance to ricochet on me? Oof. Not great. Ricochet. Average. I need to be turning out more. This 20 inch duel is fantastic. I like smaller ships as well, just faster ships, uh, doing a bit of brawling with heavy cruisers, fighting it out at knife ranges with destroyers. But the sheer devastation that these 20-inch guns can deliver, that is really impressive. Now, it looks like the Americans are not very accurate. They're looking at an accuracy of 5.4%. Uh, 
Um, mine seem to be a bit more accurate. Although I can't quite tell you how much, because it looks like... Yeah, 8%. 8%. Ricochet chance is back to average. And their chance to ricochet on me is high. That's good. And versus Junio, low. Shit. So Junio is now very much at risk of taking quite a few damaging hits. I need to try and put the Colorado down. Because I'm thinking that the Colorado has taken already quite a bit of damage, especially below decks. And if I can make that worse, I can flood her. Hmm. That whole 8% accuracy does not really seem to compute. Oh, the Colorado's accuracy is getting better. Another ricochet. Fine. Switch back to high explosive. The penetration chance says 73%, but as we have seen, shells just ricochet off the ship. Explosive on bow and stern belt might get me the flooding that I'm looking for. So far, I have not taken any hits recently. That's good. 24 9, 25 7. Crap. Junio just took another big hit. Stern deck extended. But you should be pretty angled right now, right? High chance for ricochet. And another high chance for ricochet. I'm doing 18 knots. What are the Americans up to, speed-wise? Because they were capable of doing 21, but I very much doubt that they're still doing that. They're doing 11 and 13. Okay, so they're not really quick. That means that I'm increasing the distance. Which I think will come at my benefit. 12% chance to hit versus the Americans 6.5%. Now, they still have plenty of shells. But if my gunnery can outdo theirs, I might be able to turn this uh, turn this battle to my favor. 15% chance to hit on Shikishima versus the Colorado. Let's land some high explosive. What are we looking at for ricochet? 42. Average chance to ricochet. I could turn once again and see if that will help me. 18% chance to hit versus their 7. Arguably, over a longer period of time, I'll win this fight. I'm not in any rush. Range 26 1. There we go. Good hit. Unfortunately, only a bit of fl uh, fire. No flooding. Now, we have plenty of shells, but we still have to take down the other battleship as well. North Dakota. So between us, we have about 700 shells remaining. Not nearly as many as these battleships between, these, uh, between each other. 869 and another 869 so we're looking at well over 1700 shells for these guys that is a serious match chance to hit chance to pen is 70 percent oh crap just took another hit who on junio or on shiki on the junio as long as they're spreading out the damage a bit and not immediately wiping out one of my ships i'm fine with that Range to the target. 27.5. My chance to hit is only 6.1% now. What is theirs? 4%. 3.7%. A couple of high explosive hits did a decent amount of damage, putting the structural integrity back to 48%, 47%. Switch back to armor piercing. Angle 42 degrees. Might work. Might work. Oh shit. Another 242 damage. Again, they're spreading out the damage a bit. It looks like the Junio was the one that took that hit. 
And as far as damage output versus damage taken goes, we're pretty even. Whoa! We were pretty even. Because the Shikishima got a flash fire. Yep. What happened here? Stern deck extended. So, probably this hit right here. And that caused a fire on the... Uh, maybe on the ammunition. It destroyed the main gun. It caused flooding. The rudder's damaged. Flash fire dead. Structural integrity, none. It's not like the whole ship caught fire. But just most of the ship. But the turret exploding just took out so much of the hull. That the entire Shikishima has been lost. That leaves just the Junyo. Um, and I still have two battleships to take down. This suddenly got a lot more difficult. Because now I'm doing 6 barrels versus 18. As opposed to 12 versus 18. Um, how can I turn this to a benefit? It's going to be difficult. I need a good hit. I need a flooding, ideally. If I turn bow in, that might cause some more ricochets, but we're... Never mind that. Structural damage, ammo detonation, 7,326 damage. Battle lost. <laughs> and so ends the fight of the Shikishima and the Junyo. The Americans have had enough and decided, you know what? you're out of this fight. Still, I hope you guys enjoyed the match. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. And um, I hope I did a bit of justice to the design of the Shikishima, the A150 design. Let me know if you have any thoughts for other um, historical or semi-historical designs that you would like to see down below in the comment section. And if you have a full-blown scenario, please post that through the link down below in the description. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the fight and I'll see you soon for more.